as much rock double shot Tuesday, Tuesday. on 94 HJY to take account of the huge profits being made by the company. One of the world's most seasoned politicians, Mahathir Mohamed, is to run for parliament in Malaysia's upcoming general election, even though he's 97. Michael Bristow reports. There's often talk about the age and health of the US President Joe Biden. but 79, he's nearly two decades younger than Mr Mahathir. The Malaysian politician has been prime minister of his country twice, first time for 22 years. He was appointed again in 2018 when he was 92. Earlier this year he was in hospital with a serious heart condition. He said recently that he felt well enough to be active. He needs to have another shot at being an MP. That's the latest BBC News. Hello, I'm Rosia Nigbar. Welcome to News Hour from the BBC World Service. It comes to you live from our studios in central London. The distinctive sound of air raid sirens blaring out across the Ukrainian capital this morning. Russia has carried out a second day of airstrikes against Ukrainian cities and infrastructure. The targets today have been the western city of Lviv, where a third of the city is now without power and water supplies have been disrupted too. Andriy Sadlubi is the mayor of the village. Today, a missile attack. Yesterday, after attack, we had some uh, problem. Uh, Lviv city without electricity, Lviv city with, without water. But until morning, we uh, renew the uh, situation. And one, one hour before, next Russian attack uh, destroyed electrical station with Lviv and Lviv region and we have problems today in this moment in water, in electricity and our service rebuild situation. There have been further strikes on Zaporizhia in the southeast. Away from the center of the war, the West is figuring out how to respond. G7 leaders are holding a virtual meeting today. The UN Human Rights Office says Russia's latest attacks on Ukraine could amount to war crimes. The spokeswoman for the office in Geneva, Ravina Shamdasani, 
condemned Monday's attacks in particular, their timing and location. The fact that it seems that energy facilities were targeted as well, and some of these facilities may be indispensable to the survival of the civilian population just ahead of the winter months as the weather is getting colder. As we've seen stories of um, elderly people trapped in their homes, uh, people with disabilities who are also unable to see. I mean, this is unconscionable. We have to stress that intentionally directing attacks against civilians and civilian objects, that is, objects which are not military objectives, uh, amount to a war crime. You will remember that among the places Monday's airstrikes hit were residential areas in the capital, Kyiv, including a park. The BBC's Abdul Jalil Abdul Rasulov, who lives in the Ukrainian capital, has fond memories of it. I'm in the Shevchenko Park. It's one of the most popular places in Kyiv, and one of the missiles hit a playground here. There's a giant crater, and a lot of people have gathered around it. The thing is, I used to come to this playground with my children. They love this place, and my daughter's favorite was monkey bars. She would just hang on it for hours, and I would take pictures of her, and we had great time. And now I'm really scared just to watch this giant pit left by a missile after it hit the ground. Every man or woman, never mind, will kill today, get more worried. It's terrible, really, especially in this place. Uh, all right, it's the uh, center. Yeah, we came from Zaporizhia. We thought Kiev was safe, and many people from Zaporizhia come here with their children because of that. And it is really scary to realize what happened here. We could have had children here at that moment. It's really painful to see this. the park, another missile hit the bustling crossroad. People keep coming here to take photos of this area. Perhaps some of them may have even had dinner at one of those cafes and restaurants that are nearby. Hundreds of people attended the performance of the opera car at the National Opera House, just a block away, the day before the airstrikes. And now all these people are in shock to see this destruction. The sense of anxiety is back in Kiev, and people no longer ignore air raid sirens and they go to basements like they used to do back in February and March when the invasion started. People are worried what will happen next, but unlike the early days of the invasion, many Ukrainians view the Monday's airstrikes as a sign that Russia is losing the war and not winning. That was BBC's Abdul Jalil Abdul Rasulov. Since the beginning of the war, we've seen a great deal of discussion about the ease with which Russia, with its military might, may prevail over Ukraine. The considerable military help Ukraine has received from the West and the sheer determination of a nation willing itself to not be defeated have seen many successes on the battlefield for Kyiv. Today, the head of the UK's GCHQ intelligence agency, Naomi Fleming, told the BBC's Nick Robinson that Russian forces in Ukraine are strong, but there should be no complacency over the threat posed by Moscow. Well, we believe that Russia is running short of munitions. It's certainly running short of friends. And we've seen, because of the declaration of the mobilization, that it's running short of troops. Russia 